Hello, everyone. It is time for our Tuesday morning inspirational story, and people are giving me all kinds of interesting ideas. An eagle who does, doesn't know how to fly, bonsai, ocean to our house, whale swimming all the way from the ocean to our house, oceans, love it. And earlier I had a few, I had a bunch of dragon ones and, uh, and then also a T-Rex one. And I never tell stories about dinosaurs. That's an entirely new thing. And then a lot of, uh, of um, you know, lonely trees and lonely cat and, you know, dogs in outer space and things like that. So um, I think what we'll do is I'm not sure what the story is going to be. I think it's going to be um, having to do with dinosaurs and maybe dragons and mainly maybe loneliness, uh, possibility of uh, not being aggressive, which was another possibility. So you can step away from the chat and putting suggestions in. I'm going to take my glasses off, which so now I can't even read the chat. What chat? Where's the chat? and um, get yourself nice and comfortable, pour yourself a bowl of muesli, and uh, maybe a warm drink if you're someplace that's cold like Oneonta, maybe a cup of tea, sunny and cold. Um, and let's have a little inspirational story. So this is a story that is about a T-Rex. Now, this T-Rex, however, did not live long, long ago. This T-Rex lives on the in the world right now. And luckily, T-Rexes, which you may not know, have several powers beyond being enormous and having sharp teeth and roaring very loudly. T-Rexes, it turns out, have the ability, some T-Rexes, it turns out, have the ability to live for an extremely long time. And this is a T-Rex who lived for so many years, mostly asleep, lived inside a cave, and during the time of dinosaurs when there were lots of T-Rexes and lots of Platosauruses and lots of bronchiosauruses and triceratops and other ones. Um, this T Rex felt out of place. This T Rex wasn't like the other T Rexes. This T Rex actually felt more aligned with a brontosaurus um, than a the other T Rexes and hung out with the other T-Rexes and they were always sparring and fighting and wrestling and yelling, so much yelling, teasing, so much teasing, and making jokes that made other dinosaurs feel small and they often were small. And so um, this T-Rex, whose name was Dead Rob, Nope, wasn't named Dead Rob, was named Rob. And uh, uh, Rob, the T-Rex, always felt out of place and consequently felt lonely. Now, the thing about T-Rex is living for a long, long time, they didn't actually know that. They didn't know that they had the capacity to live a long, long time. They thought that they were just like any other creature and that they lived as long as they did, and that was that. Well, T-Rexes, um, certain T-Rexes had a particular quality inside of them that if they were willing <clears throat> and if they were patient, they would be able to continue living. And once they made that decision, what would happen is that their little um, front legs would actually go into a transformation and their front legs would begin to stretch out in different directions. And the skin that was on the underside of their arms would begin to stretch and it would become wings. 
And this was something that only happened during sleep. It was sort of like the way in which a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and then comes out a butterfly. A similar thing happened with these particular T-Rexes. And Rob was one of them. So Rob just feeling like he wasn't like all the other T-Rexes who were all rough and tumble and kind of mean, really. Quite frankly, they were kind of mean. And so Rob spent more and more time by himself, wanted to meet brontosauruses and other gentle vegetarian dinosaurs, but they were all afraid of him. And so he felt like he didn't have any friends and he felt like no one understood what he was like and no one understood that deep inside he was actually kind of nice and wanted to treat other creatures kindly. And so in a very sad um, state, he went into the cave and fell asleep and went into a very special sleep, this special sleep that some T-Rexes could undergo slept for thousands and thousands of years, slept so long that the transformation ended up with enormous wings, big wide wings that when he woke were wrapped all around him. And so it took a while to unwrap those wings, kind of like watching a butterfly dry out its wings in the sun. It takes a while until they can be used. But once the wings were completely unwrapped and were open to the air, Rob smelled a very strange smell and used the talons and the front legs to push himself to the exit of the cave. And the moment that Rob took a sniff of air, realized that the world had changed. What once smelled almost entirely like plants, just greenery everywhere, rotting greens, thriving greens, and it was hot then, very warm. It was now quite cool. He caught it a chill, wrapped himself up in his wings again, and looked out to see trees that he'd never seen before stalks, tiny little bright flowers, and in the distance, these rocks that look perfectly square and all bunched up together into one mountainside. But usually mountains looked like this, but these looked like this. And so he came out and looked around and began to inspect and saw that there were some other smaller rocks nearby. And those smaller rocks were also square. And on occasion, these little monkey-like creatures would come running out and make lots of noise toward him and then run back into their little square rock dwellings or um, run into these little creatures, these little shiny creatures that would go buzzing around and would make a growling sound like all around him. And eventually these strange birds arrived and the birds that had wings on top of their body and would swing around like this rather than like this. And had one big eye in the front. And sometimes they would squawk, but not make a normal squawking sound. They would make a sound like <laughs> they'd buzz around. And it was upsetting. It was overwhelming for Rob. And Rob thought, maybe the best thing for me is to actually go back in my cave and think about this which is what Rob did. So now Rob needed a plan. He was awake. There didn't seem to be any other dinosaurs around, no other T-Rexes around. The only creatures that he saw were these little monkeys, these tiny birds, and then these big birds with the wings on top of their heads and the little shiny creatures that would growl all along the ground. What had happened? It didn't make any sense. 
Luckily, Rob was visited sometime long ago by another creature that underwent the same transformation. It was a lemur. And this little lemur was alive back in the day of the dinosaurs, was looked different than lemurs today, uh, was actually a much bigger lemur, but the transformation that this lemur went, underwent was got much, much smaller, much like lemurs today. But since this lemur came from the time of the dinosaurs, they spoke the same language. And the lemur blinked and looked outside and said, what has happened? And Rob crawled in and said, I don't know. And then described everything that Rob could recall from his experience outside. Now in the past, T-Rexes would have eaten a lemur like this, but one, Rob was not that kind of T-Rex. He was a gentle T-Rex and didn't want to eat lemurs. And two, this was his only friend now to be able to know what it's like in this new world. And so they made a deal. Since the lemur, whose name was Ricky, uh, since Ricky was willing to go out and, uh, and um, do some investigation, and since Ricky was much smaller than Rob, Ricky went out and learned things about this new world and brought back information to Rob. And what they learned in the end was that it was a lot later than when they went to sleep. The world had changed. It had cooled off. And now monkeys that existed, uh, um, the, these other lemurs turned into monkeys and then turned into people. And it was a very complicated story. It didn't make any sense to Rob. Neither, both of them were very confused by this. The idea of a lemur becoming a monkey, becoming a person, it didn't make any sense to them. And so, um, but one thing that the lemur did say, that Ricky did say that made sense, was that there are no dinosaurs, there's no big creatures. People are living in those mountains in the distance. And I think we need to stay here. And so they decided to stay there. And they'd only come out at night. And Rob would come out at night and feel the cool evening air. And eventually got a little bit bored always coming out and sitting and looking and became less bored, more curious. Like what is happening in that place with all those square mountains? I would like to go see, but he was so big, how could he do such a thing? And that's when he realized by looking up in the sky, he had wings, maybe he could fly. Well, his first few attempts did not go well. You have to learn how to do everything. And in order to learn how to do something, you have to be willing to, be, to make mistakes. You have to fail. It's just how you learn. Things don't go well all the time. And he would fall and say, I'm not gonna fly. And then would be curious again about those mountains in the distance and try it again, fall down again. Curious again, fall down again. Kept happening until one day something changed and moved his arms in a different way. They caught the wind and for a little while he swooped up and then he fell. So, but now he had gotten a taste of what flying is like and liked it. And so kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. And all the while, see, Rob is not eating lemurs or other creatures or even squirrels. Rob has become a vegetarian. And so Rob has gotten much smaller and thinner than he was. And so since he was smaller and thinner and since he had these big wings, he was actually able to fly through the air a lot easier. And he looked a little bit more kind of like a lizard, like a snake-like lizard now with wings. So he'd only do it at night and began to start flying through the city 
and looking around and would every now and then spy inside some windows. And after many weeks of that began to go out into the countryside and the same thing learned so much about these, these creatures that he learned were called people. And by overhearing some of the sounds that would come out of these cities, he began to learn the language of these people and began to learn things that they were interested in and things that they would say to each other. And then learned that there were rumors of a thing called a dragon. And when he heard the descriptions of the dragon, he couldn't help but think it sounded an awful lot like him. But he wasn't a dragon, he was a dinosaur. And so he discussed this with Ricky and Ricky and Rob together realized that they were talking about him and that they were actually honoring the magic of who he was. They weren't afraid of Rob. Instead, they were actually quite excited that Rob was good luck. And this was in large part because there were sightings of Ricky and they would see Ricky eating shrubbery or chewing on a small tree. They never thought that Ricky was in any way aggressive, that was in any way mean, that, and there were talk of certain dragons that could blow fire out of their mouth, and that seemed like a very silly idea to, to Rob. Nothing of the sort was he capable of. And so with Ricky's support, Rob actually became a member of this society. And he was known not for being scary, not for being mean and terrifying and the scourge of the area and something to run from, no. People would stay up late just to get a glimpse of Rob out of their windows. And if they saw him flying by with his big smile on his face, they felt that the next day would be very lucky for them. And so Rob was very glad that he went to sleep so long, long ago and woke here. And though there were aspects of his old life that he missed, he so liked who he was to this community and to these people who seemed to simply love dragons. So there's an inspiration for the day. Let's all be dragons today. Let's all be who we truly are and let the people around us be inspired by it, to feel like being in the presence of someone who is being who they truly are is like magic and filled with good luck. Let's be like Rob today. And I will look forward to seeing some of you on Thursday night for bedtime. Have a great day, everybody. Can see you now. <laughs>